Hello and welcome back to another KCC video. I'm Rob and today we'll be jumping into Choosing Beggars. Before we start, there's been a lack of stories on Reddit these days and I think we need to expand into some other subreddits. So let's see your suggestions in the comments down below. What subreddits would you like to see us expand into? Our first story today comes to us from Phoenix103082. Someone threatened to sue my company for not letting them commit fraud. Let's jump right in. I am a claims adjuster for an auto insurance carrier. My job can be stressful, but for the most part, I like it, and I am blessed to have a job in this economy. When you call and open up a claim, we consider you the insured, the person who owns the policy, or the claimant. The person who was not the policyholder, but maybe decided to put in a claim for damages on their car if our customer is at fault. This claim I was handling had three cars involved, our insured and two claimants. The claim was opened by the mother of one of the claimants. Since she advised when opening the claim that she wanted us to pay for her son's car, she set up an inspection for the vehicle. Even if we don't know if we will be liable, we inspect cars anyway so that we have estimates to pay you based off if we accept liability. So I get the police report and the woman's son was ticketed for failure to yield, careless driving, and driving with a suspended license. I am looking at it in disbelief and wondering if there is an error. It stated her son had a stop sign but didn't make a full stop and pulled out in front of my driver who had no stop sign and traveling with the right of way. We hit him because, well, that's what happens when you don't stop at stop signs, and he, the claimant, then hit another vehicle which was stopped at the stop sign across from where he had just come from. I am thinking to myself, is someone that naive that thinks we would accept liability when the officer wrote her son two tickets at the scene? I interview the son who admitted he stopped and saw our driver on the road but kept going because he thought he'd make it across before he got to the intersection. I explained to him that he didn't yield and my driver had right of way. I also interview the other claimant who was stopped at the other stop sign and he states that claimant who pulled out in front of my insured didn't even stop and just blew through the sign and he himself honked to warn my insured because he saw my insured coming. I asked this guy, did it appear that my driver was coming at a high rate of speed? And he told me, no. In fact, your driver had tried to stop and had the roads not been icy, he probably would have not hit that idiot who ran the stop sign. My driver tells the same thing, that the other driver ran the stop sign and he hit his brakes to try to avoid and heard the man still stopped at the stop sign hit his horn. Okay, so we are not liable for this accident. So I speak to the at-fault claimant's mother who opened the claim to explain why we can't pay her for her car. She is acting like this is not how insurance works. I even asked her, why did you open up this claim when the police report places your son as the at-fault driver? Well, first of all, I don't have collision coverage, so I can't file through my own carrier for my damages. Second of all, it shouldn't matter who has the stop sign. My son said your driver was speeding and he hit my son. My son has right of way because he was in front of your driver. No, your son didn't yield to my driver who had the right of way, which caused my driver to hit your son's car. Had your son waited for my driver to proceed and to cross when it was safe, he wouldn't have been hit. Whining, but I don't have the money to fix his car and you guys told me it was a total loss. You can still fix it if you want to and keep it, but it will be a salvage vehicle, so it'll be worth less. But who's going to give me the money to fix the car? You will have to pay to fix it yourself since you don't have collision coverage, or you can consider selling it for scrap. Well, later that day I get a call from her ex-husband and father of the driver who doesn't know how to handle stop signs. This is outrageous. You completely misled us and were fraudulent. In what way had I misled you? Well, you inspected the car and made it seem like you were going to pay. We inspected the car because your ex-wife wanted to file a claim. That is part of the process. So if we're deemed at fault, we can settle for damages. She requested the inspection, so we did as she requested. Well, you should have not inspected the car if you knew you weren't going to pay. When she put in the claim, she said she felt we were at fault, and we sent someone out there to the next day to inspect the car, sir. I didn't get a chance to read the police report or speak to all of the drivers until the day after. Well, you should still have to pay us for the car. Why? Because you made it seem like you were going to pay. 
I never once told your ex-wife that I was going to pay. In fact, before I got a statement from my driver, I called her to tell her that based on your son's statement and the police report, I was most likely going to deny any liability on my driver because both place your son at fault. Well, your driver hit him, he didn't yield at a stop sign, and my driver had right of way. Your son even admitted that he saw us and didn't wait for us to cross and knew we didn't have a stop sign. Well, now what are we going to do? The car is a wreck. Who's going to pay to replace it? I told your ex-wife. She chose not to carry collision on the vehicle, so you will have to pay out of pocket. He calls me the next day to once again complain. This time, he is pissed because the auto damage adjuster had noted the car was a total loss, and it was now showing up on Carfax as being in a severe accident. Nah, <laughs> really? I explained to him that all insurance carriers have to report these things when we inspect cars, and that it is a state regulation that it gets reported to the database. He is pissed off because how dare we declare the car a total loss when we didn't actually pay him for it. I was out of patience with this guy. Sir, your car is a total loss and is worth less regardless of the fact we didn't pay you, so the report is correct. Well, now I can't sell it for as much. Well, if anyone looked at the car, they would see it is badly damaged. You can't sell it for as much as a car that was in a wreck. But now I can't sell it for that much because of you guys. I'm going to report you to the State Division of Insurance. For what exactly? Because you didn't pay us for our car. We weren't liable for the accident, even your carrier agrees to that. But you inspected our car. Because your ex-wife asked us to. And reported it to the database because we were obligated to do so per state regulations. So let me get this straight. You want to go to the state and complain that we did not pay for this claim because we were not liable, and that we did what we are obligated to do and reported the vehicle's condition to the database system after we inspected the car per your ex-wife who opened up the claim requested. I need to speak to your manager and I will sue your company and your driver for what you have put us through with this claim. It has been a nightmare. I transferred him over and my boss calmly told him he can file a claim if he likes and we will send a lawyer to defend our driver and explain to him what I told him. I asked my boss if this man did have the audacity to go to court and try to sue. Can I please take a personal day to go and watch? I wanted to see him stand before the judge and explain. Your Honor, my wife filed a claim with this insurance company and they came out and inspected her car right away. The police report and all three driver statements put my son at fault for the accident, but they had the nerve not to pay us after inspecting the car just because their driver is not at fault. And now, I can't commit fraud by selling the car for more than what it's worth because they did what they are bound to do and reported it to the database system, so we have to admit that it was involved in a wreck. Oh, and it gets better. When I spoke to her insurance company, I was told by her adjuster, who got a laugh out of her policyholder's ex-husband's logic, that they were being dropped by them for fraud. It turns out the mom had lied and said that her son didn't live with her and didn't drive the car, but that was the only car listed. The police report showed that his address on his license was hers, and he told me, and her carrier, he was the primary driver for that vehicle. So, she was being dropped for committing insurance fraud. So to summarize, parents were pissed off that they got caught committing fraud, had to pay for their own mistakes, and because I did my job, couldn't commit further fraud. So there's definitely two types of call center agents, those that would consider a call like this a nightmare, and people like me who would have considered this a challenge and would have enjoyed the heck out of it. Do me a quick favor, have a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're not actually subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our second story today comes to us from Darlindar. We had a man coming to pick up debris from renovation, asked neighbors if they wanted to add to the pile, then this happened. Let's jump right in. I actually commented on a post similar to this and was told it should be a choosing beggar story in itself. This is my first time posting in the sub. I've always been grateful I never had stories to share until this happened. This all took place yesterday morning. We have been renovating our entire downstairs for the better part of four months. My husband has been working on it at night and weekends. He's a plumber and has a great working relationship with someone who hauls junk for a living and often cleans up his work sites. He does really well for himself as a young man. 
we pay him once a week to come and haul all the debris from the renovation. When we have a smaller load, we ask our neighbors if they have big things they need to throw out to make it worth his time. We don't even ask for money, we're just being neighborly. Well, we literally finished the floors yesterday. We had him come pick up the last load of junk. It wasn't big, so we again asked neighbors if they had anything to add to the pile, as this would be the last trip. Everyone said no. My husband left for work this morning to find two lazy boys, microwave, and six huge bags on our lawn. We were both like, WTF? So at 7.30 a.m., my husband knocked on doors to find out who it belonged to. It was our next door neighbor. She told us she had nothing to dump the previous day. She then said she called her brother to see if he had anything to dump and to drop it off at our house. That wasn't part of the deal. I told her yesterday was the last load and her brother needs to grab his stuff immediately. She told me he was moving and can't get back over here, so can we have our guy pick up this load today? I said yes, but also gave her the price. She looked at me like I was nuts because we've never asked for money before. When I explained we were being neighborly, and since he was there getting our trash, we asked if anyone had more to add. Now that we're done, he won't be coming over anymore. She said they can't afford to pay him to make the trip. My husband and son moved all the stuff to her garage, gave her the guy's number, and told her to figure it out. I'd been getting texts all morning about her sob story, because now she can't park in her garage. Not my problem. We asked her, not her brother, who we don't know. I'm still shocked she had the audacity to have her brother dump stuff on our lawn. My husband said he'd just pay, but I'm adamant that he doesn't. So flipping rude. Aftermath. When my husband came home, she walked straight over to give him a sob story about how her brother moved to Arizona because he couldn't afford California anymore. I totally understand. He reached out to the junk man, not being disrespectful, it's what he calls himself and his company. And he's picking up the load today after he leaves one of my husband's job sites. I didn't ask if he had to pay because I just didn't want to know. I also didn't want to live in animosity with a neighbor we see daily. We are not rich people. We will do everything we can to help friends, family, neighbors, and our community. This event will definitely make me think twice now. Yeah, I still don't think this turned out right because the lady only learned the lesson that if she cries, she's still going to get what she wants and other people are just going to jump to help her. If it were me, after moving the stuff back to her garage, I would have just wiped my hands of it and walked away and not ever thought about it again. Our third story today comes to us from Pass the Bike Dude. We do not have anything smaller than a small. Let's jump right in. This is very summarized because this choosing beggar said the same things over and over again. So this lady walks into the pizza chain I work at and asks me how much a small cheese pizza is. It's about $11. I have a coupon to get a large for that price, basically just saying our prices are outrageous. Oh, okay, would you like me to ring you up a large? No, see, that's too much food. I'm very sick right now and even a small goes to waste, but I'm hungry. Sometimes I can get in contact with the boy who lives next door, but not all the time. Well, if you'd like something a little smaller, it's not a pizza, but suggest another item. Well, can you just make something smaller than a small pizza? You know how other pizza chain has those small pizzas for kids? Ma'am, if I could do that, I really would, but we don't have any way to ring that up in the system. Can't you just sneak it to me? I'm sorry we can't do that, ma'am. Is there a store manager here? I used to teach her when she was a little girl. I know she'd make one for me. She is not, but shift manager is right over here. I can get him and maybe can see what he can do for you. So I go and explain to the manager what's going on, then distance myself by going to tend the oven. They talk for another 5 to 10 minutes and she is visibly angry under her half-worn mask. I couldn't hear much of it, but after she leaves, he walks up to me and says, You're an a-hole. You couldn't have handled that. OP clarified that his boss was joking with that last comment. Now, in this situation, I think I would have gone for some malicious compliance, honestly. I would have made one little itty-bitty bite-sized pizza and then charged her for a small, because I can. Last story today comes to us from Yorkshire Gal 1212 Entitled Mother Tried to Steal My Easter Eggs. Let's jump right in. I posted this on Entitled Parents, but some comments suggested that this story belonged here, so I'll post it here too. This happened a few weeks ago. Would have reposted earlier, but uni keeps me busy. 
I finally have my own entitled story, but I wish I didn't. So I, 20 female, was out on the town a few days before Easter and decided to buy myself a few Easter eggs to help me get through a few assignments. University is hard without snacks. I wandered into a shop called Wilco where the delicious chocolate eggs were two for one. I quickly put a few small ones into my basket for my younger siblings and thought, heck, might as well treat myself to a few expensive chocolate eggs too. After feeling satisfied with my Easter haul, I popped into Cafe Nero for a nice hot chocolate as living in England, it's quite cold in the springtime, and found a nice bench to drink it and watch some YouTube for 10 minutes while I enjoyed my hot drink. About five minutes into this, a little girl, about eight, came up to me eyeing my Easter egg filled bags and asked about them as I had so many. I replied explaining that I bought some from my younger siblings, one being around her age. She then told me that her mom told her that the Easter Bunny hadn't gotten her any eggs this year because the shops had run out of stock. Confused and a little sad for this girl, I offered her one of the smaller eggs that was meant for my younger sister. I had bought her two and she couldn't have had that much chocolate anyways. This little girl's face lit up so fast and I was happy that she was happy. I waved her goodbye as she ran back to her mother, which was standing like seven feet away from us and showed her the egg. I went back to my YouTube and hot chocolate. Not even a minute later, the entitled mother came rushing at me with an angry expression plastered on her face. Thinking I was in serious trouble as it just came to me how it looked of a grown woman offering a small child chocolate, I tried to explain the whole situation to her and that I wasn't a creep. But as soon as I opened my mouth, she started shouting at me saying, If you're going to give my precious daughter an Easter egg, then you need to give her one of those pointing at the expensive lint chocolate easter eggs. I was totally surprised that I didn't know what to say. She then tried to take the bag from me. I said, you aren't having those as I bought them for myself. I gave your daughter the smaller one because I had a spare. If you want the lint eggs, then we'll go have some left and have a deal on them. No, you will give me those. I don't have the money to buy them as I'm a single mother and can't afford that. Now give them here. No. If you can't afford them, then that's not my issue. I gave your daughter an egg and she can keep it, but now I need to get going. I wanted to get out of there ASAP. The entitled mother then tried to grab the bag harder and pull it out of my hand, but she did it that hard that the bag snapped and it blew away. It was incredibly windy. I chased after it, caught it, and ran away with the rest of my bags. I looked back once and saw that she tried to chase me, but had a trolley of shopping and the little girl, so she didn't get very far. I was so shaken that I headed straight back to my accommodation to type this up. So this went from choosing beggars, to entitled parents, to a plain old attempted robbery. OP, I'm glad you got out of there as quick as you did. I think that mother might have a little bit of mental illness. Check out the OPs in the description down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye